Hello, my name is Rob McNeely and welcome to this free four-week program Connecting Solutions in Hypnosis. Just a bit of general background for me. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I have a medical background. I was in a suburban uh, family medical practice in Melbourne, Australia for 10 years and became interested in hypnosis and learnt a traditional approach to hypnosis, which I started to use in my practice. And uh, things changed when I had the privilege of uh, meeting and then spending time with the late Milton H. Erickson in Phoenix, Arizona towards the end of his life. And what I learned from him really changed my whole attitude to therapy, to hypnosis in particular, and to, and to other areas of my life as well. Uh, in this program, um, I'm going to offer a number of short videos, five or ten minutes each, so that it won't take too much of your time. And there'll be uh, five in a row and then a couple of days off for the weekend, if that's what works, just so there's not too much pressure. So this will this will be there'll be twenty videos over a period of just under four weeks. And I want to in each of these videos to introduce a topic, say some things about it and then invite you to follow up on an exercise which might be um, an observation or trying something out and uh, all in all I'm wanting to make this uh, easy for you uh, as um, a way of exploring a particular way of approaching hypnosis that I've developed out of my response out of my experience of learning with Milton Erickson and then over the last 35 or so years in my clinical practice. So uh, today in the first video I want to mention that hypnosis has had a, a very strange uh, group of associations. It's been associated with magic where a magician traditionally a charismatic male comes in and does some some uh, dramatic uh, action to a passive subject. And this uh, approach to hypnosis still persists to this day in some traditional hypnotic approaches where people are uh, given orders, given directions, given suggestions by a very wise uh, charismatic person and uh, that's how it's supposed to happen. Hypnosis has also been associated with sorcery. And with sorcery, it's a different process. You can go into any New, new Age bookshop, buy a book of spells. And the power is not with the, the speaker, the magician, the therapist. The power is in the words. So anyone uttering these words can have a, an influence over, again, a passive recipient. And that passive recipient then is uh, supposed to respond to the words and the power of the words. Uh, this process continues on in contemporary hypnosis in the form of hypnotic scripts, where if someone comes for hypnosis, the, therapist, the hypnotherapist says, what's the problem? And then looks up uh, a book of scripts and then reads a script uh, appropriate to that diagnosis of that problem. Now, that's all very well to have a standard script if you can find a standard person. I haven't met one yet. Now, I've only been doing this work for 40 years, so maybe I will, but I haven't met a standard person. So there's some limitations when we just use a standard script. The other very uh, strong association that hypnosis has had was in relation to, um, in relation to general anesthetics. In the early 20th century, hypnosis became popular as a way of dealing with shell shock after the First World War. And around about the same kind of time, general anesthetics uh, became available. And so some of the jargon from general anaesthetics lives on in contemporary hypnosis about 
putting someone out, putting them under, them going to sleep, and the worries about will it work, will I wake up in the middle, will I wake up, and the idea with uh, hypnosis in this way is that we use a hypnotic approach, a series of techniques, to put someone under, like giving them an anaesthetic, so then we can do the psychological operation, the therapy. We can cut out the problem, we can put in the solution, and uh, that's how it runs. Now, while these approaches uh, are somewhat effective, they're, they're, they miss the point with a lot of people who don't like being told, who don't want to uh, be given a standard approach, who don't want to be put out or put under. And this is where Ericsson's uh, influence uh, has, has brought to bear. Ericsson spoke about what he called the common everyday trance, in which anyone can be reading a book, watching a movie, looking out of the window, daydreaming, going for a walk, listening to music, some everyday experience where we get into the experience. And he called that the common everyday trance. And as such, we can think of hypnosis as simply an extension of this common everyday trance. And as a result of that, it distances hypnosis from all of that weirdness, that, that really magical um, use of words and power, and brings it down to ground so that it becomes more available for clients and more accessible for anyone wanting to learn hypnosis. So the exercise uh, for today is for you to notice when you or other people that you're with or that you just happen to, happen to be in the presence of are showing evidence of this common everyday trance. When someone's watching television, notice what you can notice about their body, their reactions, their response. Notice when someone's reading a book or listening to music or walking along the street or waiting in a car for traffic lights. So that's the invitation. Have a look and notice in yourself or anyone else, any time where you see that focused, absorbed experience happening as a part of everyday life. And if you could, please leave a comment about what you noticed, whether this was unusual or frequent or surprising or interesting or whatever uh, response you have and uh, leave a response on the, the website here or if you prefer send me an email direct. So thank you for joining us and uh, uh, I'll see you in the next video tomorrow.